the 12th episode and final episode of our first series of the Sew Ab Fab podcast. I'm Ali and I run Bobbin's Sewing School and my co-host is Caroline of the sewing business Sew Ab Fab. Hi Caroline. Hi Ali. Hello everybody. So in our podcast we introduce you to guests that are integral to home sewing or have connections to the sewing industry. Many of our guests have small to medium sized sewing related businesses and all provide necessary resources and products to help you as sewers. So Caroline, how are you today? I'm good, thank you, Ali. How are you? Good, I'm fine, I'm fine. But we were meant to be meeting up, but the world had different different appointments for us. So we haven't met up this week, but I'm really hoping we will be able to meet up for the maybe the um, reintroduction of our second series. Perhaps that would be nice, wouldn't it? It would be definitely. It's definitely not cancelled, just postponed. Um, yes. We will get together, we will. Um, yeah. give each other a big hug, and and yeah. just yeah. catch up and really? laugh and giggle again. So, um, so yes, yeah. But I do have something quickly to say because I have been boring the listeners for a, well. This is the twelfth week about Daisy, my broody hen. She is no longer broody. <laughs> <laughs> I can go in. I'm not pecked. <laughs> there's eggs again not her but the other two yeah, good. um so all's good on that front oh. so that's my little bit of uh happy jig this week <laughs> <laughs> she'll start to look nice again as well won't she she's she probably- is. her feathers are back down yeah she's looking sleek and she's eating so that weight that she lost yes, yes. um Same. she's being picked on a bit um but I'm hoping that will settle down yeah, I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. Yeah, I mean, they are funny things, aren't they, when they go broody? They're a bit... Oh, you know, she was, for, she was a hormonal teenager <laughs> or a menopausal... <laughs> no, 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 she was a pregnant. She was pregnant, basically, wasn't she? That was... Oh, she was a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever she was, that's it, yeah. <laughs> yeah all done. Anyway, let's go back to oh, sewing. Oh, yes, <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> How are the wedding dresses that you've been making, Ali? So they are coming along nicely. Weddings will be in the next couple of weeks. So I have just got a bit of hand sewing to do, which is not too bad, I have to say. It's a long process. I think creating wedding dresses is, I don't do it all the time, as you know. No. It's something that I choose to do. Um, but it is a process. And I think it's because everybody who's having a wedding dress made they want to think about it well in advance and so much invested in it so much invested in it and and I think it's that's that's probably why I'm I find it isn't my favorite thing I love making them don't get me wrong I absolutely love it love it but I think it's there's so much emotional attachment that goes to it and you know making a wedding dress it's 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 finding the resources ensuring you've got everything that you need ensure you know and that that takes the time that's the bit that takes the time yeah and depending on the style obviously the construction can be just as quick as other things but I think we all start making them and planning them too far in advance the more changes there are along the way yeah yeah Yeah, because plans adapt and also there is um advice or another word for it, interference <laughs> <laughs> from those close on the sidelines. <laughs> you know, I've been really lucky with these two. It's just been Good. pride and mum. And it's lovely. been lovely. Yeah, it's been lovely. I have to say, I think if it's bride and mum, it's fine. If you bring in all the other entourage, then there are there... lots of opinions. And yeah. Mm. Yes. I mean, it's a bit like, have you ever, I mean, I have a little go-to secret. I watch Say Yes to the Dress. I know you do. And I don't watch that. <laughs> <laughs> and say yes to the dress and you can see all these this, the entourage sitting there and I don't know whether it's a little bit of like um jealousy or I don't know but they've always got something to pick a hole about <laughs> yeah and I think yeah and you it? can you can turn somebody they can somebody can be feeling it's the same with everyday dressing isn't it if mm. you feel really good yourself you come across And you have the confidence. If you feel really bad because something's niggling you with what you're wearing, then you lose your confidence. And if somebody just says, oh, I'm not sure about that neckline or, oh, I'm not sure about that ruche or then you're going to have this little niggle in your head saying, oh, it's not how it should be. It's not quite how it should. It's not what I 
it's not the best thing for me. And I think that's the thing. So I think the thing is, as with everyday dressing, dress for yourself, not for everybody else. Yeah, because you're the one who's wearing it. And at the end of the day, you've got to feel comfortable walking down that aisle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so, uh, so yes. Did you manage to make your own garment? Not yet. <laughs> I will but it's still there in your head and <laughs> and you have the fabric I have the fabric I have the I have the power at my fingertips <laughs> <laughs> you just don't have the time Ali I we will need to, we need to give you a magic wand it'll to get you going fine. it'll be fine I've, I've still got time so it's not like it's not I've got a month it's not so bad so yes but yeah so um wedding dressmaking oh I'd love to know how other people deal with it you know I think yeah yeah we should have asked Sean I think we touched on it briefly didn't we she doesn't make wedding dresses but she did in a previous life yeah yeah did in a previous life so yeah so it's it's all good all good to go so we have we put out a plea for some questions didn't we we did people for our episode and we asked what they would like to know so we have had some quite interesting questions come through from Instagram and various other resources so do you want to read one of your questions out Caroline? Um, I will one of the questions I'm actually going to break down into two parts so the first question is Ali what aspect of sewing do you enjoy most? Oh you're asking me I think yeah, yeah. The, the, the aspect of sewing that I enjoy most I actually really love the and I think this is, comes through practice I actually really love the planning of the cutting out so a the actual measuring and making sure that I'm getting the best measurements for the fit of that garment in the first yeah. place I think that's a really important part of the of the uh the sewing journey really with it with something and I really love I do love the cutting out I have to say I, I am a bit of a I do love to get my scissors into that fabric. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I think we all have yeah. different parts that we enjoy. And um, and for me, it's starting. So once I've cut out, it's actually sitting at the machine and starting to put the pieces together. I actually enjoy making sure that the tailor's hacks are in place and everything is ready so that I know that when I sit at the machine it's it should all fit together like a jigsaw puzzle doesn't yes. always but yeah um that's the bit I enjoy yeah so I think we're both in the same sort of area there we're in the preparation yeah. I yeah. think we're both in the preparation of it and I think if I think if you get the preparation right then what follows goes very well if you don't get yeah. the preparation right then what follows can be a nightmare so I think that is the bit that I enjoy the most is is that preparation measuring up the patterns well you you are absolutely amazing at juggling pattern pieces and you get the best out of your fabric yeah and I'm yeah. not so good I I can see what you do and I think oh I wish I could do that but sometimes yeah. I do waste a bit of fabric but then it goes in my recycling box and it's used for something else oh, yeah. so that's right that's yeah. Right. yeah actually yes I do I do love having a bit of fabric that's a bit short <laughs> I know you do you do, or not just a bit short are you like a good sort of 20 30 centimeters short so that you can test whether the over told yeah. you what to buy or not yeah, yeah. I, I actually get satisfaction as well from pressing because I know it'll take it to the next level yes definitely yeah definitely um yeah so uh so yes yeah. so we, we've I think we've answered that uh question uh yes. do you have a question I do I have a question from actually Stitch in Valley Craft who sell recycled or vintage fabric and she is asking do you have any advice for people who might want to support turning an interest in sewing into a profession um, for example if you wanted to become proficient in a specific area such as curtains or clothes alterations I think there's a one word answer for that actually it's practice isn't it yeah I was going to say it's over and over, over. and if you go on courses take yeah. it in um, and find out what works for you so to hone your skills because you might learn different things from different people yes. but you've got to find out which method is going to work for you especially for curtain making and blind making and yeah. and as you say practice that method until you've got it spot on because you have to yeah. deal with all the different drop measurements and all the different widths as, it's quite funny I, I had a sewing 
club last night and two of the ladies were doing Roman blinds. And as you know, Ali, that is not me. It's too much maths involved. <laughs> and, um, and I was listening to them all night trying to work out their maths and um, trying to explain that actually it's not going to be perfect on that first one. You know, it you can't, especially working with checks and everything else, there is a lot going on. And yeah, yeah. It, so it is practice and learning the different types of fabrics. So printed fabrics might be skew. Yes. They might have been printed on the skew, yeah. skew. And so you're having to work with that yeah. kind of wonk, especially yeah. if it is a line in it. And I think actually, no, it's not a one word answer because actually you, you're right. Um, I think that the most important answer is is practice, is yeah. rep- repetition, 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 repetition. repetition. And I think the other thing is to look at other, you know, in clothing alteration, she has asked about clothing alteration. I think that it is to look at how things are manufactured and Mm, I take them apart. apart. I learned so much about clothing alteration through altering professionally made garments. And it was just because we were altering professionally made garments, like in a ready, ready to wear made garments. And it's, seeing how they're put together and putting them back together as they were made and also don't doubt yourself you know to begin with you're probably going to be doubting yourself with regards to your abilities but you know if you've practiced and practiced then you should not doubt yourself and I think that's the thing and um the other thing I would say and I think you will agree with this Caroline a business doesn't grow instantly it takes oh totally yeah yeah it takes uh, it takes a long time and a lot of work and it it, people think well working for yourself is easy it's not your you are your own worst critic and you do um I I don't know I'm I'm just speaking for experience you put in a lot of hours continuously Mm. continuously I do not stop I go to bed thinking about it I wake up thinking about it it doesn't mean I don't love it it just means I want to get it right for everybody and there's yeah it it takes time to find your area in the market and for it to to build it does it does yeah and also not to be worried if you have competition out there you know yeah competition can be good so don't 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 worry about competition don't think oh x y and z across x y and z are doing this so there's no room for me because there is room for you but you have to find your little niche Mm. and you have to you know find your customers and if you do a good job then you're going to keep they'll come back yeah they will yeah 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 they will so yeah it is it's hard and charging is hard I find that's one of the worst things for me Mm. Um, working out your value oh my god I think I'm 51 years old and I still feel that I haven't got a value at times yeah you, yeah you shouldn't think that you really have because you have got all those skills and you've put in all that effort and you've you've invested invested hugely financially mm. mentally physically into something and so that is worth something at the end of the day so definitely yeah yeah so the advice is um I think <laughs> don't doubt yourself practice practice and more practice <laughs> definitely and then go for it go for it yeah with a big smile on your face yes, yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely yeah <laughs> yes have confidence in yourself that's it yeah, yeah definitely so yeah well good luck good luck yeah you know, um, I have another uh question um it's a, a question regarding pattern sizes um and um trying to get extended pattern sizes okay yes um so um and what I what I'm finding Ali and I'm sure you're finding the same is that actually uh pattern companies are starting to um bring out a a larger range so from the smaller smaller sizes right through to the more curvy sizes um but what I'm finding is they're not all out on paper yet so uh, a lot of them are still pdf and the, and i think ali i don't know if you're right and this is because actually it it's hard work grading these patterns and um trying to grade it so it fits on paper and yes and, and then take it to the next level i think the pattern companies probably are doing them as pdf first to a see the demand and if there is a demand for these patterns 
patterns, they are starting to release them. So I think they're starting to come through. Um, and I think us as teachers and, and providers of, of kits and uh, fabric and stuff, we're starting to see it come through and we're wanting to use them. Oh gosh, yes, definitely. We're just waiting for the variety. Yes, we are. Yeah, it's nothing, it's not personal. It's just, no. it's uh, it's not personal. It's what there is and it's yeah. really tricky. And yeah, the independent pattern companies are really trying. They're very, very hard. Oh, it's a big movement. They are. It's a massive, massive investment for them too. Yeah. Uh, and I think until, you know, until they can actually prove, prove the sales, you know, they can't invest because they, you know, they're, they're investing a lot of time, money and energy again, and they have to make sure that that's going to have a good return for them. Otherwise they'll push them under. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and, and I think it's wonderful. I think it is fabulous that all these new size yeah. ranges are coming out and I, and can't wait and really hope it oh, continues. Yeah. Um, it, and it's lovely to see so many new pattern companies coming out with ideas. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. And I love to see the models as well, the inclusivity, inclusivity. of yeah. everybody. And I think that's really important. And yeah, uh, yeah. And it, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. Um, and we're all guilty of hiding away things. I know when we take the photos for the kits, I hide my crutches away and that's really wrong. But in truth, it's I've wrong. waited for a new pair of crutches and I've got them now. <laughs> so they don't look happy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you're not going to literally... <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> forgive you I, I have smarter crutches now so we will feature them a bit more but it it, it I know how important it is and I should do it yes. so I think yes. you know we I think we all need to be a little bit more inclusive yeah um, so yes yeah. so um another oh. interesting question okay is um is what is your well the question was, um, could you tell us the about the different types of fabrics, their pros and cons, but that is such a broad range of fabrics. So why don't you yeah. tell me, Ali, what you love to sew and what you do not like to sew? Can you guess what I love to sew? I know, exactly. <laughs> so Ali's, I, I could be wrong, she could really shock me, but I think Ali's favourite fabric to sew with is wool. Yay! <laughs> bah! <laughs> Yeah, she lo uh, loves anything, <laughs> anything wool based, but for good reason because it's such a, a wonderful fabric to sew with. It you can manipulate it. It's it just works with you. It's natural. Yeah. It works yeah. with you. If you shut you're it, not fighting it. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, definitely. So I don't I'm dog in my sewing room, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, um, and it is forgiven I think oh, yeah it's his wool comes in all types of fabric so you yeah. can have thick you can have fine you can have silky you can have you know boiled you can have woven you can have it, it's you yeah you can have wool it's everything it, it encompasses everything and and the thing is with wool is that it takes heat and steam and it gives a wonderful finish you know mm. you, you can mold it mold it you can mold it you can shape it you can you can press it to its you know and it just does what you ask it to do it literally does what you ask it to do unlike my sheep where I have to describe <laughs> ginger nuts, ginger nuts. Yeah, yeah. and pears I've given them a healthy pear snack yeah. recently, so, so yes so, yeah so and, you, and what, yeah, you see, yeah. I was going to say so. Wool, wool is definitely my fabric, and and I would wear it all year round because yeah. it's it's so wonderful. It can keep you warm. It can keep you cool. It is a natural fiber that does that, and it breathes. So yeah. yeah. And what about what? What is your least favorite fabric? My least favorite fabric would have to be a slippy nasty polyester satin. not a lining fabric but you no. know I mean the sharp yeah. satin I just wouldn't even I wouldn't even try it Ali you know me I'm like it's yeah no thing. it doesn't do anything no no no, no. no you don't want no. that uh, yeah no, puckers and bubbles and yeah absolutely I mean I I I don't mind I don't mind slippy and slidey fabrics but I don't like that particular one <laughs> <laughs> so Caroline what are your favorite fabrics to work with 
Um, I actually, like you, I like wool, um, having made all the jackets with you. Um, but I also like denim, I, but I like denim to wear. I, yeah. I find it quite versatile um, and I wear it a lot. So um, I do like working with denim. It's got some weight and you can press it and it, it, it does as it's told. Yes. If there's not too much stretch in it. Yeah. Um, yes. My least favourite fabric would be anything that's really fine and slippery. Anything that shifts. Can you remember the disaster I had with uh, stretchy velvet? Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it won't be touching that again. No, so, <laughs> walking foot with that. You definitely yeah, have a walking foot. It was uh, all fine until we got to the neck band and, yeah, threw, threw my, my toys out of the pram. Yeah. Um, so, yes, <laughs> so I won't be working with that again. But no. again, there are so many fabrics now on the market that, you know, that we can get mm. our hands on that. Oh, yeah. Probably a few years ago that we couldn't have, like scuba. Yes. I mean, scuba. we wouldn't have got that. Scuba's great. And um, and I actually think that, so if we're direct, directing this to a newbie sewer, I would be suggesting to them that they start working in a cotton because yeah, oh, definitely. I always work with cotton, a woven cotton to begin with. And I love it. Yes. Give me a nice bit of uh, yes. Prima Lawn or oh, yeah. I mean, a Liberty I, Lawn. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know Liberty Lawn is expensive, but my yeah. gosh, it does it do is. a beautiful job. It does. Oh, and it and always uh, looks, it looks yeah. gorgeous. It almost looks like silk, but it's not. Mm. And I think that that's a really good thing. So I would, if I was, if I was directing a newbie sewer to a project, I would suggest to them that they work with a, a cotton and not nothing, nothing too nylony, slippy or yeah, polyestery or, I yeah, mean, yeah. viscose, viscose comes in all sorts of shapes and forms. Yeah. Well, the, the heavier the weight the visco the, the easier it is, is to use is to work yes so yeah. anything the heavier the weight actually the easier it yeah. is as long as it's not a f- not not solid firm fabric yeah. yeah yeah i'd love to i would love to love to have a go with leather but uh everything about it screams at me no i think you need just need time i had the most amazing college tutor I will name her because I'm sure somebody yeah. somebody out there might know her. Um, she was called Verushka Hoffman. <laughs> she was lovely. She was so lovely. She had beautiful, she was just dolly. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that's not offending anybody. No. She just had the most wonderful fingernails that were painted the same colour as her lipstick. She had the most perfect makeup all the time. She looked a million dollars. She really did. And she made leather coats for herself she wore a lot of leather and I remember that she had this one coat it was a white leather coat that she wore to our lectures <laughs> as you do as you do and um and basically she'd make leather leather clothes all the time leather leather coats and you glue them you PVA glue all your seams you sew them and PVA glue them <laughs> I'd be worried that the glue would go everywhere. Well, I suppose you're very careful, aren't you? But yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I, I, I love Varushka. She was so amazing. When I'm teaching, I always often think of her as as when she was teaching us too. So Caroline, what what do you want to make with leather? I'd like to make a jacket. Would you? Um, yeah, I would. Uh, just a simple jacket. I uh, shaped leather jacket. Yeah. But I would like to make one um amazing so yeah yeah that that would be nice actually wouldn't it it's just something a bit different but obviously probably talking a couple of years down the line when I have a bit more time because right now I yeah. just don't have it I did see a lovely um little jacket with just a waterfall front so there was no fastenings oh okay um so that's a very soft leather yeah, yeah very soft leather but I just yeah. thought actually do you know that's really lovely just to slip on yeah. um my worry is the line inside of it because I, I think I'd have to line it. Yeah. Um, so I, um, I have got in my stash of fabric a piece of pleather, which is yeah. fake vegan leather. leather. Yeah. What do they call it? Do they call it v- vegan leather? Yeah. yeah. And, um, and I actually saw somebody wearing a skirt with a leather front and a tweed back. And this is... Oh, wow. Actually, it was really nice. Pencil skirt. Leather yeah, beautiful. Front leather front it's going to be but tweed back and actually I really liked that and I thought that's a really cool look 
Really? You can really mix and match your fabrics. Yeah. People don't. Uh, I don't. I, I like to stick to what I'm being told to do. Yes. Um, but yeah, you can. You can be as creative as uh, you want to be. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's quite interesting. So, yeah, I, I haven't got any desire to work with leather, I have to say, although I, I can do, but I, I probably choose not to. What would I like to make? Ah, oh. I wouldn't mind making a silk shirt, as in proper oh, pure silk. Pure silk. But I've yet to find the silk that I really fancy making it from. Men's or women's? Women's. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, I'd like to make myself a really nice silk shirt. But um, then again, I'd probably ruin it because I'm not very tight. I'd get gravy down it the first day I wore it. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, I'd have to make a bib to go with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or just drink through a straw and not eat anything. Yeah, yeah that, you know, that's the answer. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. But yeah, so, you know, but I do like wearing and what weight making um, things from viscose uh, chalice, which is really nice because that's quite sort of like lightweight. It's drapey, it's flowy, and it's cool because it's actually. Yeah a natural it's actually made from a natural fiber as well yeah yes yeah. so you know that's it's, it's interesting is it yeah yeah there you go yeah <laughs> but there's the world is your oyster no fabric is beyond using it's just how you actually use it and what you actually put it into as the project I think that's yeah. more, more to the point isn't it it's not what the fabric is it's what the project is and work with that project and make yeah it. you've got to have the right fabric the right project yeah yeah so on um on the backs of patterns or with pattern information they usually give you a list of the fabrics that are most suitable don't ever shy away from stretch fabrics either because they no they're a joy to sew with they are a joy yeah absolutely use the correct needle the correct stitch and your way to go yeah, definitely. So, Caroline, I also um, put out a question to some of my Instagram followers, and that was, um, what function do you like best on your sewing machine? And uh, having Hobby Fun came back with her favourite is the start-stop button, which she uses because she stands, she needs to stand to sew. And I understand that some people do like to stand to sew. So actually, you know, using the start-stop button is really, really good. It's um, So in effect, if people yeah. don't know what that is, that means that yes. you're not using your foot pedal for the sewing machine. You're using your hands to control it. So you press start to go and stop when you want to yeah. stop instead of pressing the foot pedal up and down. Yeah, and it's not a function on every sewing machine. No. But it's a really good one if you do have, foot or leg yeah yeah it's um it allows you to you you know you don't have to think about your foot control and it's speed control too because you set it to the speed that you're using on the sewing machine so yeah yeah so that's that's a good function for those you know obviously it's not as I say on every machine but it's a good function and you came back and said that I you did really miss you miss the locking stitch function on your yeah machine. so on my old machine um it had a locking stitch. So I used to press the button and it went up and down four times. And basically you didn't need to reverse if you didn't want to, yeah. um, or if you came to the end and wanted to do a dart and just yes. wanted to stop where you were. My new fandangled machine doesn't have one. Is it not? How no, funny. How you can funny. press the button and it will do one stitch. Yeah. So you have to press, and I'm just, I, that's impatient to me. I'm like, oh. yeah. Yeah. so, um, so yeah, so I do miss it. But you also said what you liked about your machine. Well, I, yeah, I hadn't really thought about it, but I like the little scissors. So I know these yeah. are upper, I know these machines we're talking about are slightly higher than the higher price range. Yeah, they are. They're slightly higher than your um, your entry level machine, but you know they are really good functions. And I love the scissors. I love the scissors on it. So when I come to the end of what I'm sewing, instead yeah. of pulling the threads out and cutting them manually or on the side of the machine I just press a button and a little knife comes across and it comes cuts across it off cuts the threads off it does mine tiny little bits and you don't have to pull all your threads so it saves a lot of thread waste it does save a lot of thread and yes. actually interestingly enough on those machines you don't have to find your bobbin thread either it doesn't <laughs> 
so we are we're talking about little fandangled things that are on a you know that we are just lucky to have new to us and look how many years we've been sewing exactly you know yeah we both had to treat ourselves to um the next level up machines in the last few years and um we we hadn't had anything like that before no no so Caroline, this series has been great fun. I've really enjoyed it. Have you? Ah, oh, loved it. It's been the best time to catch up. We've yeah. had lots of giggles and had <laughs> lots of fun doing it. I've really enjoyed a lot. I still. I know. <laughs> what was I still, I still haven't got over your uh, analogy <laughs> with quilting and dating. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, Ali, you really threw me. But yes, so we've had we've had some great topics um and some great interviewees we have amazing they've all been amazing they've all yeah. been great so yeah so I'm really looking forward to the next series and we will be record, yeah. starting to record that very shortly but we're gonna have a few weeks off I think to uh catch up with life and uh yeah we will yeah, be we keep, and then we'll be back we will be um, back, back with you having, hopefully having caught up with each other and and uh, definitely record. and take you we'll be back and take you right through to Christmas I think so yeah. uh, which will be yeah. lovely yeah, it will be fun. Oh, I said the C word. Oh, my it, goodness. It is not long. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> no, I've had an inquiry about Christmas stocking classes. <laughs> I said it too. Oh, no. <laughs> July. Oh, only July, July before we go off on one. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Anyway, Caroline, thank you so much. It's been great. But we would love to hear from you, our viewers and listeners, because we... We have got a lot of people to interview, but we would love to hear from some more people. So if you know of anybody that you think deserves to have a little shout out on our our podcast, then we would love to hear from you. Um, and anything really textile related where, you know, if you have a little business that you not a little business, that's always I that really annoys me that when people say, how's your little business? <laughs> God, why did I say that? <laughs> really? I know. Big. Yes, you prickle. Anybody, anybody that has their own business and they're working really hard in it, and um, and they'd like to, you know, be interviewed, we would be more than welcome to uh, to call them up and do that interview. So, if you enjoyed our podcast and like to hear more, then please do su- subscribe, and you can find more details about us and the links to this show at www.soavfabpodcast.podbean.com. And there you will find our website links to social media feeds. Keep in touch. And in the meantime, happy sewing, everybody. Happy, happy sewing. Bye. Bye. Bye.